Hi, I'm Derek Pitts of the Franklin Institute Science Museum, and welcome to the Cleopatra exhibit here at the Franklin. You know, the ancient Egyptians were a remarkable group of people who were great technicians, great builders. Uh, they were really, really outstanding at, at their time. Of course, they ruled most of the ancient world in their part of the world at that time. And that's just a testimony to how well organized and how great they were. One interesting aspect of ancient Egypt is astronomy. There are so many different aspects in which astronomy of their time has come across to us this time. We are almost indebted to them for some of the things they provided us with. Let's go back to some of the very basic stuff that uh, actually was known at the time to the Egyptians that uh, we certainly now know today. Here's a very interesting fact. At the time of Cleopatra, it was already well known that the Earth was round. In fact, that had been calculated by Eratosthenes some 200 years before Cleopatra. So by her time, it was already known what shape the Earth had. So that's one astronomical point of uh, interest that you might want to tell your friends. Invite them to come to the museum and learn that aspect about Cleopatra. Well, another one is how the Egyptians used astronomy in their everyday lives. The way in which they used astronomy was not really the, uh, the method in which you might think they would have used it. You know, many people think that astrology, being an ancient study of the night sky, might have been one of the tools that Egyptians used to help organize and govern their lives, much in the same way that some people do today. That's not really the case. In fact, the Mesopotamians and the Babylonians may have used astrology somewhat in that fashion, but not the Egyptians. The Egyptians actually used it in a slightly different way. They used the positions of stars in the sky to help them with the orientation and construction of important buildings. Let's take the Great Pyramids for the example. The Great Pyramid at Giza actually is lined up according to direct north, south, east, west directions. And it's only off by a very few arc minutes. So it's very, very accurately positioned north, south, east, west, as are the other main pyramids in that same location. The other thing that's very interesting about the Great Pyramid is that in the construction, air shafts were built that led from the deep interior all the way to the exterior. But those air shafts, when they reach the outer surfaces, make little openings. And those openings point directly to stars in different parts of the sky. And they were very important stars, obviously. Now, those important stars were part of the constellations Orion the Hunter, uh, Canis Major, the big dog, a very bright star that's very important, Sirius, and also the Big Dipper. And believe it or not, these three together worked for them for various important reasons. Now, Sirius is probably the most important of these stars. And the reason why is because Sirius in its association with Orion, represented uh, death and rebirth. These things were incredibly important to the Egyptians because they strongly believed in an afterlife. So these stars all together really were important to them. Sirius was also important because it marked the beginning of the flood season of the Nile River. That, of course, was extraordinarily important because it provided the nutrients to the soil that allowed them to grow the crops that they needed for their civilization to eat and thus that was the key, the key to their greatness.